Hey everyone, um, today I'm going to do a bit of a different video. I'm going to show you my HO rolling stock, uh, which is actually just part of my HO rolling stock. I have a lot more, but after I left for college, my parents moved a lot of stuff around the house, so I was only able to find two shoe boxes worth of HO rolling stock. Uh, anyway, before I get started, I'm going to show you this behind me, which is uh, part of my car collection. It's just some of the best. Uh, so we'll get started here with uh, this 124 scale Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. And then uh, just do a pan here through some of my favorite Hot Wheels. This is a pretty cool collection that I've uh, amassed. I worked in retail for a bit, so I was able to have first hands on some of this stuff before it even hit the shelves and buy it for a discount, obviously. And yeah, that's uh, some of my Hot Wheels. I think I've got about a thousand Hot Wheels. I should be posting a video pretty soon of uh, my favorite ones, maybe just a quick pan of all of my Hot Wheels. But I've got some uh, Jada toys here, uh, Hummer H2, 2006 Camaro Concept, and then a couple more Hot Wheels up here in my chest trophies, a couple more Hot Wheels. And this is uh, this is one of my favorite Hot Wheels, Twang Thang, can't see it that clearly, this camera doesn't do it any justice. but. I spent years and years looking for a Twang Thang, and I finally found one at a flea market for, believe it or not, a dollar. In, in the package still, mint in box. It's a beautiful, beautiful ride. So, Alright, let's move over here to the tripod where my rolling stock is. Alright, now as you can see, this isn't too much. I've got about, I would say about 10 times more than what I'm showing here. But I'm going to get started with uh, my gondolas here. First up is uh, this Lifelike DT&I gondola. Uh, got uh, All of this stuff I got it at a hobby shop here in Chicago. It's called uh, Pilot Hobby Shop. It used to be on Belmont near Central. But it unfortunately closed I think in 2008. So I first went to buy, their, buy a starter kit there which I'll show you guys as I move through the rolling stock. But I went to buy a starter kit there and then I started going and then I didn't go back for a while and then the last day that I went everything was on sale because the store was closing so I got most of this stuff for pretty cheap most of it for actually all of it for under five bucks some of the stuff I got two for a dollar which was pretty sweet uh, up next I've got this model power southern 40 foot uh, silver gondola very nice unit pretty heavy it's pretty sweet made of plastic but it looks like it's steel which I, I like a lot I got a couple more of these somewhere but like I said gotta find them because my parents moved everything around up next I've got this Bachman uh, also 40 foot gondola except this is Union Pacific uh, this is one of my favorite uh, units that I have because Union Pacific is my favorite rail company uh, so I definitely want to do a layout with Union Pacific, but uh, judging from the way things are going right now, I'm guessing that's going to be a few years, if not maybe a decade down the road. Of course, uh, this is also a pretty heavy unit, very beautiful, very nice. Um, Alright, up next I'm going to move over to the box box cars. This is a lifelike Wilson car lines that I got with uh, the first starter set that I got, which was the Santa Fe starter set. Um, if you can see the Santa Fe locomotive is that one right there that came with the starter set. So this is a pretty sweet box car. I mean nothing too special about it but came with the package. Alright next I've got this uh, Great Northern stock car. Got about 20 of these also somewhere. No idea where they're all at. No idea how all of this got separated. But obviously both of the doors will work on this. This is by Lifelike. I like this so much. And I've got a lot of uh, HO scale livestock that I could put in here and have a nice little rolling train. Of course, I would probably get a steam locomotive for this um, since I would want to do like a 30s layout with that type of car. And next, I've got this uh, Union Pacific Reefer. This is made by Bachman. Uh, very, very beautiful unit. I like how it has a weekend handle it slogan on there. Nice Union Pacific logo. I like this unit a lot. I you know I have a, about two or three more of these somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's that. And up next I'm going to show you my favorite car, my rolling stock. 
This is a very historic uh, Union Pacific Fruit Express reefer, which of course was, uh, I believe, one of the first uh, refrigerated boxcars, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, uh, this was used to move fruits and vegetables across the country and keep them refrigerated so that they would reach people's houses in uh, pristine condition and still fresh. Alright, and that's made by a Thern right there, that boxcar that I just showed. Alright, next I've got this Model Power DuPont tanker. And the reason why I got this was I saw DuPont and I'm a pretty big fan of Jeff Gordon and NASCAR. So uh, even though I just got back to watching NASCAR after a few years, but, but that's beside the point. This is a pretty sweet unit. Uh, this is the only one that I have. This is du DuPont. Um, and I like how it says uh, anhydrous ammonia right there. So, yeah. Alright, moving on to the next one. I've got this also a model power um, hooker uh, tanker. And this is actually pretty heavy. Like You probably can't tell, but this is really heavy. And it says Niagara Falls under a hooker. Pretty nice unit. Uh, again, nothing too special about it other than the fact that it's heavy and it says Niagara Falls on it. And I like Niagara Falls. Been there a couple times. Alright, next I've got this uh, Model Power Hudson's Bay and Oil uh, yellow tanker. Also very heavy. You Again, you can't tell, but it's pretty heavy. Very nice unit. And finally, for my tankers, I've got this Philips 66, uh, made by a Thern, which I got, believe it or not, for 20 cents at the store I was telling you about. Got this for 20 cents, um, and the guy had about 60 more of these. I bought every single one of them. I have them all somewhere. Some of them aren't even put together, but wherever they are, they're in storage. I know for sure somewhere in the house. I love this unit. I, It's... Very nice unit, very unique. I had to put this one together, obviously. It took me about five minutes to put it together, but it was fun. Alright, and up next I've got my hoppers. Got, I'm going to start off with this Lifelike Everywhere West Open Hopper. Very nice unit. Also came with the first starter set that I have, so this is the only one that I have. Still pretty nice. Uh, pretty lightweight. Made by Lifelike. Up next, I've got this uh, Union Pacific Covered Hopper. This I is from Lifelike as well. Also bought this at the hobby shop. Paid 50 cents for these. And I know for a fact that I have about 80 more of these somewhere in the house. Kind of disappointing that my parents move stuff around without uh, telling me where they put it. Or without labeling the boxes. But, well, I'll find it. It's in the house, right? So uh, i got to find it sometime. Got a couple uh, Union Pacific engines that I uh, would run these with on the floor. I never built a layout, but I would, I would still lay my uh, my track on the floor upstairs. I'm in the basement right now, but the floor upstairs is hardwood, so it's pretty sturdy to set up some HO skill track. Next up, I've got this Athern uh, Northern Pacific 57 foot covered hopper. Very beautiful unit. I had to build this. Well, put it together. Um. It's pretty heavy because it's got the, it's got a weight here in the bottom to hold it down on the track and so that it doesn't shake too much. But every so often I manage to rattle up the weight loose and then I have to open it up again and set it down and then make sure that it doesn't rattle loose again for a couple weeks. <laughs> this is a pretty nice unit. It's probably, yeah, it's the only green unit that I have right now that I could find. I know I have a couple of Burlington Northern stuff. Up next, I've got these two um, Rio Grande 57-foot covered hoppers, also from a Thern. Also had to put them together. Of course, that wasn't too much work, and all, both of these also have weight on there, so I've got two of these right here. Both of these. Alright. Next, I'm going to show you my cabooses, which are, no pun intended, <laughs> this is my Santa Fe caboose. It came with the starter set that I've been telling you about. Paid about 40 bucks for that starter set and was great fun until the uh, the power unit died. Not the locomotive, but what you actually plug into the wall. So, pretty nice caboose. I uh, eventually want to do a layout where I weather this and set this off to the side. Um, kind of showing it, you know, decaying over the years. So, next I've got this Illinois Central Gulf. 
uh, caboose which came as a set with those two engines right there those uh, GP38-2 engines from Illinois Central Gulf which I believe is now obsolete nevertheless I uh, purchased a set at the hobby shop that I was telling you about Pilot Hobby paid about five bucks for the whole set pretty nice unit I wasn't disappointed um, next I've got probably the most expensive units that I have in my whole collection these are from Ravel and these are coil cars and Ravel first started making HO scale in 1956 and guess what year these are from 1956 so I'm guessing these are pretty expensive today uh, and one of the very cool things about this is uh, if you look right here I don't know if you can tell but these have springs so it's pretty cool that back in 1956 they already were putting that much detail into HO scale pretty sweet right there huh so I actually paid a dollar for both of these and when I went on uh, Wikipedia and found out that Ravel started making HO scale in 1956 I was like wow these might be worth a fortune a small fortune someday all right finally I'm going to show you my locomotives this is a Santa Fe EMD F7 if I'm not mistaken strangely it has no number but I mean that's how it came it's a powered unit it's really heavy um, of course I gotta fix that right there you know how that happened kind of upsetting but whatever uh, next I've got this uh, also slightly damaged Illinois Central Gulf power unit this is a GP38-2 number 9561 pretty nice right there but again uh, disappointing gotta fix that though it's not completely wrecked I've got a dummy here for Illinois Central Gulf it's a 9569 very nice unit. Also, it's pretty heavy for a dummy, actually. But both of those are from Lifelike, along with the caboose uh, that I showed you earlier. And finally, my last power unit, which is my favorite power unit, is this Rio Grande um, 5316, uh, made by a Thern. Had to put it together, but it was worth every second that I spent putting it together. And actually, my mistake: it's not a power unit; it's a dummy. It, even though it is a locomotive, so it's a power unit, but it's unpowered. So it's a dummy but pretty cool unit very sweet paid uh, three bucks for this I believe but that's an SD45 right there I like this unit a lot so thanks for watching the video I appreciate you for watching uh, all my videos or as many as you can you know not the best quality but that's as much rolling stock as I have for the time being uh, if I find any more I will definitely put it up or at least put it to put some pictures of it up and link them to YouTube. And uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this for the next couple of years other than just maybe lay it out on the weekends every so often and play with it. But if anybody's interested in buying any of that and you want to make me an offer, I mean, sure, go ahead. But I mean, I might keep some of the more special stuff, but anything else is up for grabs if you want it. So thanks for watching and... Uh, Keep on railroading.